We recently installed a Xantrex 330 watt max flex solar panel on Paradox. In this video, we're gonna talk about why we chose to select a Xantrex panel, why we chose to mount it on our Bimini. We'll go through the installation process and then how it's been performing over the last two months. Last season we cruised with just a single 430 watt fixed panel on our dinghy davits and that was not enough to keep up with our daily usage, particularly on cloudy days. This season we knew that we were going to want additional solar, but as you can see our davits are already completely taken up by this panel. Unless we wanted to go to the extreme lengths of building an entire arch over the stern, we had to get a little bit more creative about where we put it. One option that some boats choose when they don't want to have an arch is to mount panels to the side rails and have them deployable by swiveling out. We weren't really interested in, the, in that. I don't like the idea of having to um, swivel them up when we want to use them effectively. And I don't really like the way it looks to have the side of the boat taken up by solar panels. That really just left our hard dodger or our canvas bimini. And obviously we chose to go with the bimini as it's our largest flat area to work with. Whether we had chosen the Dodger or the bimini to mount a new panel on, either was best served by having a flexible panel that could be mounted to conform to the contour of the surface. Because the bimini is a significantly larger area than the Dodger, that's where we chose to focus our attention. On top of the Bimini, we've got approximately an 80 inch by 48 inch area to work with. So the next task was to determine what panel or combination of panels would output the most wattage. Our selection process is also somewhat complicated by this being a 24 volt house battery system. That means we either need quite a large panel that is always outputting well over 24 volts or two or more smaller panels run in series. After going through practically every panel I could find on the market, far and away the most wattage I could find to fit into that area was the Xantrex 330 watt max panel. So what we really liked about the Xantrex panel is it fits the dimensions of our Bimini perfect at approximately 72 inches by 41 inches, maximizes the space that we have available, and at 330 watts it is in a single panel, more watts than I could find by combining any set of smaller panels within the given space. And one of the features that really drew me to it is that compared to a lot of the other cheaper panels I've seen, it's a lot thicker and more ruggedly built. This panel is three, nearly four millimeters thick, which is just over an eighth of an inch. It just feels solid, um, even though it's quite flexible. They're a lot thicker than a lot of the cheaper panels on the market, uh, which was important to us because on our Bimini, it's going to be mounted over the crossbar that runs through the center of the Bimini. On some of those thinner and cheaper panels, if they're mounted over any kind of hard point, uh, that can cause a lot of problems. It can damage cells, potentially even cause fires. With the Xantrex panel, that is not a concern. I talked to the engineering team. They were totally confident that there would be no issue with that. And it also has a high shade tolerance compared to other panels on the market, which is a significant factor on a sailboat given all of the standing rigging and the mast that can shade the panel as the sun moves and the boat sways at anchor. Another consideration with the Xantrex Max panel that maybe isn't quite as important, but I still care about is that it looks good. It just looks really clean with our dark gray bimini and it, it just blends in with the, the entire look of the, the cockpit area. Compared to either some of the other flexible panels on the market or a large solid panel, it's just a much more aesthetically pleasing way to do it. Another factor that should ease some of our installation is that it's entirely backed by a 3M double-sided adhesive that makes mounting on either um, a hard surface like gel coat or presumably like an RV top or even canvas, pretty straightforward. When we were thinking through how to install this Xantrex panel, um, we chose not to adhere it directly to the Bimini because we wanted to not have to conform directly to the ridge created by this crossbeam. The panel is 
affixed to the bimini entirely through zippers on the fore and aft edge. So any flexing that's happening with the, the bimini underneath as the wind blows through, or if we make any changes to the geometry of the crossbars, uh, won't create any issues with the adhesive bond between the solar panel and the canvas mounting panel um, because the zippers are doing all the work. In the interest of full disclosure, Xantrex did give us this panel for free. But with that said, I had already selected it independently. I wanted this specific panel. We were ready to buy it, uh, but we happened to meet a Xantrex rep and that's when they offered to let us have a panel for testing. Once we had the panel in hand in St. Augustine, we started the installation by test fitting it on the bimini and confirming the measurements so that Cap could begin sewing the canvas panel. Uh, we kept the setup for this project pretty simple. I have three yards of Sunbrella canvas that roughly matches the canvas on our bimini. Two 72 inch YKK zippers, some high quality marine grade UV resistant thread, scissors, sea rippers, and some um, basting tape. This will be really helpful to tape down the zipper before I sew it to make sure that it lines up perfectly. Um, and I'm just using my heavy duty um, standard sewing machine. I don't have a sail right. That would probably make this job a little bit easier, but um, my singer should be fine. So when you decide to build a canvas backing, here are the steps to do that. You first have to take a measurement of the panel and decide how much border you want showing for your canvas. For us, we kept it very narrow, only a half inch on the leading and back ends and flush up against the sides. All right, so the first step is completed. I have sewn the hems of all four sides. We just went up on deck and did a quick test fit and I think it fits great. And then you're gonna attach your zippers to the leading and the aft edge of the canvas backing. So we now have a solar panel sized piece of canvas. It has a zipper on each side to connect the long way to the bimini frame. And we are going to start the process of adhering the solar panel onto the canvas. The way we chose to go about this process was first to flip the solar panel upside down, and then we applied it in a way that you would apply wallpaper, which is very slowly and incrementally. So we removed a little bit of the backing strips at a time and slowly rolled the canvas on top of the adhesive, making sure that we were applying firm pressure along the way. The 3M VHB tape needs 72 hours to fully cure, so we paused the project on deck and refocused our attention on the interior, where I installed wiring, breakers, and most importantly, our new Xantrex MPPT solar controller. Okay, we've got just enough room in our utility cabinet for the controller to fit. We'll have our breakers from the house batteries and the solar panels mounted up here. Okay, so it only took about an hour. I was able to get the solar controller and a pair of breakers installed. So I've got one breaker here from the solar panel to the controller and another breaker that goes from the solar controller to the house battery. And it just allows me to open the circuits on either side of the controller if I need to service it or disconnect the panel. While we were waiting for the adhesive to cure, a weather window to sail from St. Augustine to the Bahamas opened up. So we headed offshore for the trip across the Gulf Stream and over to the Exumas. 
once settled in the Exumas Land and Sea Park at Wardrick Wells, we picked up where we left off. The only issue that we encountered during the installation process is that after we would adhered the solar panel to the canvas panel, we noticed that there was a little bit of looseness along a few spots of the edge of the panel where it was supposed to be bonded to the canvas. I got on the phone with Xantrex's engineering team and after discussing our installation process, what we'd done, what the conditions were like, it was pretty clear that because we had installed the panel in St. Augustine, where it was only in the mid 50s and quite damp outside, um, that had almost certainly led to not getting a, a strong bond between um, the adhesive and the fibers and the canvas. But the nice part was the engineering team was also very confident that if we just applied some heat, either with a hairdryer or a heat gun on a low setting, that we would be able to uh, re-soften the adhesive. We could just warm it up and apply pressure along the problematic areas and then allow it to cure again. So that's what we did. Um, and we've had no problems with it since then. All right, we have finished heating and re-rolling the perimeter. It feels well bonded now. So we're ready to pick up the panel, move it over to the Bimini, test fit it, find our location. And then we will sew on the zippers and the corner pockets onto the Bimini and we can attach it permanently. All right, so when we installed the zipper previously, I had added some, it's basically double-sided tape to the non-attached side of the zipper. The idea being that we can just adhere this zipper straight to the bimini top on both sides um, and then sew it down pretty easily. We'll make marks for where we want the diagonal corners to go. Um, get that all fitted, then we'll take the canvas off the bimini frame and we'll go below. We'll sew the zippers down and sew the corner points and then we can zip it all in and hopefully it should fit nice and tight. With the zippers taped in place, we removed the bimini one last time and Kat sewed the zippers in place and also installed corner patches and a weather strip along the forward edge to protect it from driving winds and rain. Now we were ready for the final installation and to connect the panel to the electrical system. All right, got it hooked up. Now I'm just gonna tuck these cables up inside of the bimini, get them out of the way and out of the elements. All right, moment of truth. I'm gonna close these two breakers, connecting the panel to the controller and the controller to the house batteries. We'll see what happens. Controller's firing up. Wattage is coming up. All right, so with this panel up and running, we have nearly doubled our uh, boat's capacity. We'll check back in in a month or two and see how everything's going. All right, so lessons learned from our installation process. Two things. Uh, the first, definitely the most important, is during the adhesion process between the solar panel and your mounting surface. You really need to follow the directions and you need to do it in a warm environment. The instructions that 3M provides for their tape state that, but we just didn't follow it because we felt like we needed to move ahead on the project while we were in St. Augustine, but that was a mistake in retrospect. The second lesson that we learned during this installation process was that building it on a removable canvas panel was great for our use case, but adds a lot of work to the installation process. We're happy that we chose to build the panel in a way that makes it easily removable using zippers, but for other people's use cases, perhaps you don't need that and you could 
just adhere the panel directly to your bimini. The downside to that is that if you have to replace the bimini canvas at some point, um, I'm not sure how well the adhesive would work if you removed the solar panel and tried to reapply it to a new section of canvas, but it would make the installation process much, much quicker. In the two months since we first installed the panel, we've covered more than a thousand miles from St. Augustine down to Puerto Rico and the Spanish Virgin Islands where we're sitting right now. Over that time, we've had a chance to monitor the performance and we're really happy with how it's been going so far. Uh, we're regularly seeing output at 330 watts or sometimes even slightly better. So it's working as advertised. It seems to be quite tolerant to minor shading like we get when uh, there's a bit of rigging or something that casts a, a narrow shadow over the, the panel. So that's excellent for our use case on a sailboat. From a power output standpoint, it's, it's doing exactly what it was supposed to do. We've also been carefully monitoring the performance of the adhesive on the back side of the panel, and we're also really happy with that. There's been no sign of any detachment at any point along the panel. It's holding very firmly onto the canvas backing, and we've experienced winds up to about 40 knots in squalls and routinely seeing the 20 20 plus knots that we get here in the trade winds and no issue whatsoever uh, one other factor that we wanted to monitor was where the panel lays over the bimini crossbar that has not created any problems it, there's no sign of any damage to the cells there's no cracking no, no stress cracking doesn't seem to be having any negative effects on the panel so we're totally content with that and at this point we'd feel comfortable recommending to other people that if they uh, have a similar installation where they're going to be installing over cross beams that it would be safe to do so with with one of these xantrex max panels we can strongly recommend using these panels at this point so if you have any questions about either the panel, the performance, uh, our installation process, feel free to leave a comment, reach out by email, or just reach out to Xantrex directly. We've had a really good experience talking with their, their engineering team. I think they'll have great advice for you if you have an installation use case that's a little bit different than ours.